All right. So <clears throat> to kind of begin with and to set the problem again, if you remember quickly our previous class, right? Friends, this course is fundamentally designed to make you and you know, apart from an environmental science expert, which you all are, I'm sure, is also on the modern tools and techniques which will be utilized, you know, to basically come up with a more informed decision, right? For decision making. That's the whole point and the kind of uh, development which is going around in saying GIS, data analysis, all that. So really kind of learning all those different aspects. So the first leg of our course, I introduced you last week, that was on GIS, right? Now, as, as I told you, as discussed previously, there are two other equally important legs. One of it is the data or the statistics, right? Will will our our journey today will start with a story basically uh, from a forest basically and you'll try to practically understand how uh, basically statistics come as a tool to basically help in decision making. The third pillar that will be tomorrow will be basically discussing about upon coding right. That's Python. We'll again start from very basic and showcase what the course is going to be like giving you introduction to a couple of very important kind of topics. All right, so the second leg, uh, let's try to focus and understand. So to start this, let's try to basically, you know, unravel a statistical odyssey. This is basically a story. There was a famous movie basically, which came around last year. The movie name was Pushpa, okay? Now in this movie, what basically happens, if, if anyone would have seen it, it's about basically smuggling of uh, the redwood basically in the forest, right? So on similar grounds, what happens is there is in southwestern Karnataka, right? There is There are somewhere these tall redwood trees, you know, in a forest. And fundam, yeah, exactly. It's smuggling of red chandan wood or sandwood, excellent chuvangi. So on a similar point, what happened is in forest, you know, there are forest guardians. Basically, they guard the forest. They live as a, you know, on as a local public, not from the government side, but they often help, say, the government or NGOs if something fictitious is happening in the forest, right? So let's call them as the forest guardians in our story. So somewhere in southern Karnataka, what happened that in the heart of a resist, you know, in a redwood forest, a group of dedicated environmentalists, basically, they embarked on a mission because what they understood is there were trees which were there from very ancient times. You know, these redwood trees are uh, very important from the point of view of climate change, right? The CO2, carbon dioxide sequestering because they have been here from very long time. So very deep roots, they are kind of assimilate those carbon dioxide and, you know, all kinds of positive things. But apart from that, what's also important is they have, <clears throat> you know, there are ancient trees which have been part of the forest for a very long time. So the moment, if there is any disturbance, so what will happen if there is any disturbance in, say, such an ecological setup that will somehow impact the other aspects as well of the, you know, of the ecosystem of the forest. For example, wildlife would be one of the important factors which might be getting affected. So on a similar grounds, what happened on one of the fateful days, now the forest guardians basically noticed that there is a, there is a word I'm using, friends. Trend, and you know? time will understand what it is, but they observed there is a troubling trend. Trend matlab patterns, right? What they observed ki jo deforestation ho hai, maybe the mafia or anybody who's doing it, they are seeing that uh, there is a troubling trend. Why? Because that is impacting the ecological balance. Somehow. Maybe the animals or the flora or the fauna or basically the, the birds which we are visiting, they are somewhat showing a different kind of a signature. As a, as a non-scientific guy who is an environmentalist, hardcore, I salute them. They basically look at these, right? They look at these patterns. Is trend ko dekhte hai, right? Now, basically what they do, you know, the moment they find it, they ask for help from a professor, from a renowned professor somewhere in US, 
that's professor maya and basically her team and they call her that please professor maya help us that we are facing this trouble i'm trying to understand ki kuch aisa ho raha hai right can you help us and unravel the story kya ye sahi baat is it right or it's just a, basically we are just not able to you know scientifically back our theory can you help us on that so professor maya along with the team now sets up on this journey to basically unravel the this basically the trend analysis and coming up with something called as a you know hypothesis ki ye sahi hai ya galat right so to do that the first thing friends jab bhi in real world tomorrow or now you all would be involved in i don't know but in future i'll uh, kind of try to better understand each of your background where you are in your academic journey like everyone is a student at some point or another in their journey so you all get different projects to handle right so whenever there is a project which comes into your hand and you have to take a decision or you have to give basically an insight the first step is you need to solve the data puzzle as in aapko data chahiye hoga right only once you have the data only then you can basically <clears throat> you know come up with analysis right so some of the data with professor maya basically looks up and asks these gatherers and her scientific team to basically gather quickly is about the forest cover so here they might use some remote sensing technology which we'll look into in a different light right in the days to come but i've given you a taste of that right through satellite imagery remote sensing karke you can somehow get an idea of the forest cover secondly is the logging activity anybody in the chat box logging activity kya hota hai anybody can you tell me what is logging activity cutting down trees excellent right so basically uh, the process of cutting down trees for you know whatever be the purpose right industrial purpose or some mafia and i don't want to get into all those details but the fundamental reason is ki tree cut karne ka data as in on a time scale basis let's kind of roll back in time yeah for commercial purposes thanks dr ankita what are be the reason but time the data type will be ki if i have a timeline say approximately in a in a particular area i was seeing x trees so x minus 2 after you know after 15 days or x minus 5 after 15 days right so basically we need a temporal data activities that have been performed illegally yeah absolutely that is well again all that is basically to break a loss of the forest right you want me to basically that's felling the trees in simple and easy terms secondly if there is a doubt in the environmentalists who are on the ground ki some of that's doing a ecological imbalance they need some data on wildlife population as in for example uh, i don't know someone might look into park marks right for identifying the population of leopards etc right or they can have some other counting techniques they can contact the local wildlife you know authority the government whichever which is there they might be keeping some data log of the wildlife population right that's a second important data and third of course <clears throat> if you fell the trees as you know as environmental scientists we all should know that you know trees are a important part of the ecosystem right in the entire uh, you know water energy cycle there is evapotranspiration flux all that imbalance kind of comes into play albedo the reflectivity from the surface so somehow it can impact not somehow it will for sure impact the precipitation and the temperature right we all know the concept of urban heat islands right what is urban heat island anybody in the chat box <coughs> what is the jargon means uhi urban heat island we would have heard about it at some point of time temperature increases certainly okay <clears throat> yep so basically urban heat island is right in the exact in industrial areas or you know around the city fundamentally so what happens whenever a city grows for example we talk about new delhi right it has you know expanded today the uh, 
people you know trod to center delhi right from you know greater noida for example or you know the other part like uh, gazi i mean yeah of course gaziabad gurgaon so that's the extension of the city now with that extension what happens is a lot of concretization which happens right so which was earlier say forested land or agricultural land we as human beings we paved roads we made you know asphalt and other things to build roads we built concrete jungles in the form of apartments and all that so what does that do that you know that somehow creates a imbalance in radiation right so in the, in the day time say when the radiation is uh, kind of absorbed by these different buildings in the night time if it was say a you know it if it was a it was a kind of a the vegetation land it could have been radiated back but what happens in those high rise buildings the reflected radiation you know kind of goes on to different walls and all the energy gets trapped in a form of a bubble right in that entire urban landscape and that has numerous impacts right it can of course heat stress etc etc but there have been case studies like you know 2005 what happened that uh, in mumbai right there was a the city of mumbai completely got flooded because of the urban rains right and it was one of the studies uh, hypothesis postulated i'm using these words hypothesis all that all that we know very well what it is by end of today's lecture and basically they said ki city mein itna zyada energy trap ho ja raha that basically leads to convective activity and sudden you know cloud burst so between these high rise buildings the clouds get stuck and they you know basically burst and all the water comes down so that's how the rainfall and temperature kind of gets impacted the moment we start cutting down trees and you know from a vegetation uh, set up we kind of move to a urban setup right absolutely okay yeah, excellent that's the whole point so the first part is the data puzzle ab in sare cheezon ka data unless and the professor has the data she cannot you know come up with any kind of a study now the moment she gets data what she will do she will do something called as data analysis using statistical methods that is our second pillar of the course the statistical methods right a lot of data analysis will also do in python right as we move along vehicular pollution being the major source excellent here yeah. that's also a very major point uh, that also impacts i mean i'm really would be looking for a study in future how is basically urban heat island and pollution dynamics mixing together if there is a if there is a study you find uh, please do share with everyone in the group so we all can basically get enlightened how pollution and <clears throat> you know this urbanization nexus kind of works together if you find such study one of your seniors in your previous batch actually preeti she is working on same project actually from the uh, on the capstone project where she is trying to explore in delhi how this urban heat island and pollution kind of both the things mix up and how that leads to you know climate change and the historical data and all that yep lack of green cover etc absolutely so the professor now when she has the data she will basically perform data analysis using statistical methods <clears throat> or statistical methods where what will come out basically she has to come up with three very important things right pehla patterns patterns as in what kind of uh, data structure is for example is the rainfall intensity increasing it is decreasing or we don't see any signal of increasing or decreasing right there are statistical analysis on that basically and statistical tests as well for example there is something called a sand slope analysis man candle test we can do all that in your in this course to kind of cover because in today's world it's very easy to do things with the package right because all the mathematics of those bada bada equations what we study in statistics that is taken care by the software we just need to apply and you know kind the of, kind of understand the the fundamentals correctly so you can very well do a lot of statistics statistical methods with these softwares that is the end goal of our course right and we'll be doing a lot of these things with python specifically okay fundamentals is a separate thing we have to understand it 
you should be knowing so that nobody talks nonsense with you tomorrow but also at the same time you should be in a position to do these analysis in in, in a language like python right because there are so many amazing libraries you can just import two lines of code will help you do all these different words which are written on the right hand side similarly trends is also like upon pattern finding trend is like an, a positive relationship or negative association ship and similarly something called as correlation we'll understand all these things in a lot of greater detail right right you know these correlations we'll go in the cartesian coordinate system and i'll give you a feel of what r square is right in the days to come when we'll be in the pillar of statistics <clears throat> not today because this is just an introductory lecture, but this is what is to be, is to come in the days to come. Okay. All right. So apart from that, <clears throat> just a second, guys, let me just have some water. Okay. So apart from that, what happens next is uh, <clears throat> some statistical terminologies everyone should know, right? Because again, these are demo classes. I still want if you go on an independent trajectory in a scenario, still there should be certain things we should, which you should be using in the right way, right? Because of our, this meetup, right? These three demo classes or our small journey, if it's not a long journey. So technically some of these statistical terminologies is Population and sample. So, for example, if Dr. Maya over here, she was given ki achha, trees are getting felled in this entire forest. The forest is a huge setup, right? There would be millions of trees. She cannot, you know, have an analysis of all those millions of trees. But what she can do is she can define a study area, right? And then from that study area, choose a sample. Basically, in bade se, you know, pool mein, you take certain population like sub part and that is what is called as a sample right so in statistic in this head as we move along in our journey often we'll be doing this analysis where we'll be performing the analysis on sample not on the population okay and using that information whatever summary comes out on the sample we will give our conclusion add a whole to the population right that is somehow i'll say the uh, I'd say one of the, uh, you know, cunning ways statisticians work, right? For example, how they prove the efficacy of a drug. And that's, a, you know, this is a very hot play job today, you know, being a statistician in any industry. And one is, you know, always welcome with both hands because you, you will be the one through data analysis and, you know, simple testing. You'll be the one who will be making all the science and discovery coming to a final conclusion based on certain tests, right? Those tests may subse important terminology hota to understand sample and population, right? So basically to understand the extent of deforestation in our, you know, the Odyssey, don't forget the Odyssey. We are looking at a story, right? The guardians basically conducted a population sampling. Basically, they selected certain representative areas. Jahape they would have seen there are activities happening and Based on that, they'll collect the samples. Ki ha, saab, ya pe itte trees the, itte time mein itne cut out hoge, right? So coming out with some data on the tree population from you know at a sample level, right? That's the first thing. Second statistical terminology jo hum aksar use karte hai, is called as hypothesis testing. You know, when I was in my master's days, there was a professor from MIT, right? He came to give us a lecture on hypothesis testing. He showed a lot of coding in MATLAB. I respect that. And, you know, after two hours of teaching, I just asked him, hey, sir, what is hypothesis testing? <laughs> so it was a very uh, kind of a, a funny situation because, you know, it's like ki puri Ramayan ho or phir Ram konda poochra. He said, ki, beta, you should have asked it in the starting itself, right? So that's the whole point. These terminologies are used so extensively, but people often don't understand. If you understand, well and good, don't get offended. I'm just telling my, my journey 10, 15 years back, right? 10 years back, not 15. So hypothesis testing is basically a job of a detective, right? It's a very, uh, I would say, 
uh, cool type of a job profile for a, one who has to do a hypothesis testing. And basically what he has to say, hypothesis testing with detective ko bas ye batana hota hai ki if it is true or not. Simple. Ki saab mein kisi ne, you know, ek drug discovery kari and he's saying ki meri drug ki efficacy itni zada hai. Now detective saab will come up, perform a hypothesis testing and it will prove ki ha ye sahi hai ya galat. Bas itna hi kaam hai. Kaise hoga? बेसिस एक टेस्ट के बेसिस पे होगा राइट टेस्ट आप समझते हो ना टेस्ट फॉर एग्जांपल हाउ डू एक्सप्लेन डायबिटीज एक बीमारी है राइट डायबिटीज हाउ डू वी चेक फॉर डायबिटीज एनीबॉडी इन द चैट बॉक्स हाउ डू वी चेक फॉर डायबिटीज इन द चैट बॉक्स प्लीज टेल मी किसी भी पेशेंट को डायबिटीज है या नहीं हाउ कैन वन या ब्लड टेस्ट एक्सीलेंट क्या होता है उस ब्लड टेस्ट में थोड़ा और आगे बताओ फ्रेंड्स व्हाट हैपेंस व्हाट डू वी डू Insulin level, yeah. How do we check? Yeah, level, that's the word. <clears throat> so, what do we do? We basically take, we draw a sample of blood, right? Or a sample of blood may, uh, for example, if I'm doing it for my grandmother, I'll say, Dadi, let me have, you know, some sample of your blood. Then I'll put it on a strip. Basically, that's a di uh, diabetes testing kit. And based on that, it shows up a number, right? One number, if it comes 100 se kam, for example, then it's safe. Ki chalo, you're not having sugar issues, you're not diabetic. Or if that number comes high, then that guy is basically X or Y, whoever we are, whom we are testing is kind of diabetic, right? So similarly, stake hypothesis testing karne wale detective ke paas bhi kuch test karne hote, right? Aur us test mein ek value nikal ke aati hai. P value bolte hai, baut kuch hum dekhenge uske baare mein aane wale dinon mein, right? And I told you again, we don't need to learn those hardcore formulas. Python in a click, in a line will create those tests, right? Skykit learn karke ek package hai. In that, we can perform any kind of a test. But, Test ke baad hypothesis ko, you know, accept karna hai ya reject karna hai, that is what you got to know, right? As a scientist, as a as a statistician, who has to take a decision fundamentally, right? So, ab yaha pe sahab wapas aate hai, yaha pe jo professor sahab the, unho ne do hypothesis test ka rakha situation, yehi samajh ki hamesha H0 or H1, this is the terminology which is being used, right? H0 mein kya hota hai, ki deforestation rate waise hi hai. मतलब इट्स अ नल हाइपोथेसिस कोई चेंज नहीं है जो एनवायरमेंटलिस्ट भाई थे हमारे उनको वहम था कोई ऐसी सच्चाई नहीं है एच वन क्या है नहीं डिफॉरेस्टेशन हो रहा है और देर इज अ स्पीडिंग टेस्ट यू नो देर इज अ स्पीडिंग अप काइंड ऑफ हैपनिंग राइट तो दैट्स एच नॉट एन एच वन एंड देन विल बी अ टेस्ट राइट समथिंग देर आर डिफरेंट टेस्ट आई समराइज इन द लास्ट स्लाइड टूडे एंड आई एम नॉट गेटिंग इन टू द डिटेल्स टूडे वी आर हियर टू अंडरस्टैंड द टर्मोलॉजीज और उस टेस्ट के बेसिस पे जैसे हमारी दादी माँ को हमने बोला था ना आप डायबिटिक हैं या डायबिटिक नहीं है उसी प्रिंसिपल पे मिल जाए सिंपली से कि हम एच नॉट को एक्सेप्ट करेंगे या एच वन को एक्सेप्ट करेंगे राइट सो समथिंग सिमिलर प्रोफेसर माया डेड एंड केम अप कि डिफॉरेस्टेशन इज स्पीडिंग अप राइट अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट जो तीसरा बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट टर्मोलॉजी है विच वी हैव टू जी नो एट एनी कॉस्ट अंडरस्टैंड एंड वेन यू आर a statistician for sure is the correlation analysis right so sample population hypothesis testing and correlation analysis correlation analysis kya hota hai correlation analysis is nothing is just about identifying relationships do cheez ke bare mein right for example ab yahan pe jo hamare professor sahab the professor maya what did ma'am and her team found ki jab unhone data ko plot kiya jo bhi unhe wildlife ke abundance aur numbers ke bare mein mila tha aur jo felling of trees ho rahi thi logging hai na jo hum trees ko kaat rahe the to unhone she just put it on a xy graph right so we look into it again from very fundamental aspect but this is you can just imagine this is the x axis this is the y axis these are numbers say 0 50 right 100 etc etc and similarly the wildlife abundance is also on a similar number right then they just plot these numbers yeah null and alternative hypothesis testing exactly right same thing 
right? So H not and H one. We'll talk about it in a very much detail, right? But abhi ke liye bas ye samajhna tha ki ye kuch hota hai, concept hota hai, and then there is a test, right? And then we apply that test, or hum usi ke basis pe ya to null hypothesis ko accept karte, ya fir usko reject karte, right? So automatically ya null ko hum reject karenge. So we will accept the alternative hypothesis, right? Okay, great. I hope everyone is following any doubts, anybody. Sorry, I've been, if I'm fast, if I'm slow, please in the chat box. Is everybody following these fundamentals? Samaj me aara hai koi doubt? Okay. <coughs> Great. So when talking about the correlation analysis, we basically put up these data points, right? We put up the logging intensity and wildlife abundance. Now the moment we put, we get these four data points, for example, right? Or... What do we do from this is we try to pass a line through it. We are able to pass a line and we get a relationship. Relationship kya nikal kya hai? Relationship kya nikal kya hai? Kaise dekhna hai? XY graph ko. Amesha, in life, whenever you have an XY graph, always look like this. Ki jab jab meri logging intensity bad rahi hai, right? As my logging intensity is increasing, my wildlife intensity is coming down. Right? That's why I have a negative association or a negative relationship. Right? And this is what the correlation analysis is. Right? I have a negative relationship. Matlab ki? Iska kya matlab hua? Anybody in the chat box? What does this mean? What does this mean? Inversely proportional x and n, but मुझे बताओ in a simple way, right? What does this mean? As an environmentalist, मुझे बताओ, not as a statistician. With increase in logging intensity, wildlife, excellent. That's the whole point. What we are observing is as the logging intensity is is kind of increasing, the wildlife abundance is kind of exactly. जितना cutting हो रहा है, उससे abundance decrease हो रही है. मतलब कि हम पेड़ को काट रहे हैं. <clears throat> और जो वहां की वाइल्ड लाइफ है वहां से भाग के जा रही है डिफॉरेस्टेशन होगा तो स्पीशीज घटेगा एक्सलेंट राइट सो सम फॉर्म ऑफ यू नो लाइफ इज काइंड ऑफ बिग्रेडिंग ऑफ कोर्स प्लांट एंड एनिमल बोथ राइट दिस व्हाट इज द कोरिलेशन एनालिसिस बेसिकली टेलिंग राइट सो नाउ लेट्स गेट बैक टू द स्टोरी व्हाट हैपन ओवर हियर व्हाट ऑल वी डिड राइट in this i just try to summarize it in these points that arm with the knowledge professor maya and her team devise a multifaceted conservation plan to address the root cause of deforestation they collaborated with government agencies local communities forestry companies you know to implement stricter regulations matlab ki logging rate ko kam karna padega that is what came out of their report one of the major kind of findings using statistical modeling techniques now the guardians basically professor maya ko bulaya kisne tha guardians ne bulaya tha right they projected that impact of the conservation efforts of course because what happens if professor maya came in she gave her the know how right ki wo kaise kaam karte the they were trained to understand statistics so with time jo naye conservation efforts un logon ne lagu kiya right they observed again over time after collection of data that is the ecological health the ecosystem health improving or not right and you know as the kind of initiatives you know as the wheel rolled they observed that the redwood forest ka deforestation kam hua and the biodiversity kind of kind of coming back by the sounds of chirping birds rustling leaves and the gentle flow of pristine streams everything right water bodies plants animals all of them started breathing again and the success story of the forest guardians data driven conservation efforts served as a beacon of hope for environmentalists around the world as a story and to the power of statistics one can not only save the previous ecosystems but also you know one can inspire a global movement right and so happy ending to this story right to this story not to the class right we have a lot of things to cover still today right and happy ending to the statistics you can see this is an image where in those redwood 
PK forest where the animals are back. And Professor Maya, how basically the pivotal role of statistics is in environmental sciences. And statistics is not just that complicated formula which we, you know, which we read, right? Uh, how we have studied, right? I have also studied the same way, you know, big, big, big formulas and remembering that. So statistics is not just about that. It's the, you know, the powerfulness of the subject along, you know, to work with, coupled with, say, environmental sciences, right? So that's the <clears throat> happy ending to the statistics story. <clears throat> Any doubts, anybody till here? If not, we move to the next level. Thank you. So I hope everyone is now motivated to understand the statistics and to learn this, right? So what is statistics is all about, right? Again, on your journey, बहुत डिटेल में देखेंगे द मोमेंट वी स्टार्ट वर्किंग ऑन स्टैटिस्टिक्स हमारी कहानी शुरू होगी हिस्ट्री से राइट वी ऑलवेज यू नो इन आर इन आर कोर्स वी ऑलवेज यू नो एज आई सेड कि हम दुआ सलाम करते जिन्होंने इस सब्जेक्ट को जन्म दिया है राइट सो आर आज स्टोरी विल डेट बैक टू आई थिंक चाणक्या टाइम वेन वी स्टार्ट आवर यू नो रियल जर्नी इन स्टैटिस्टिक्स राइट बट For now, to understand, to give you a firm understanding, what statistics is all about and what all one needs to learn and understand, there are two things, right, friends? Two things we have to understand in statistics. Me, statistics from an application ke point of view, say, always only two things will be. First, we will compare groups. As in, for example, I have plotted left hand side me some data plot. Just that's an absurd graph. Just give you an example. This is the summer temperature. right summer temperature in the form of a graph we'll understand these graphs in a lot of detail in a few days to come but just understand ki i have compared the temperature of delhi shimla and manali <clears throat> right the summer temperature so basically i have compared groups of data sets right there are some groups unke data ko maine compare kiya that's the one of the things which we'll do in statistics the other thing is ki kya टेम्परेचर और प्रेसिपिटेशन में कोई रिलेशनशिप है सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ आई थ्री सिटीज राइट डेली शिमला मनाली आई हैव रिकॉर्डेड सम डेटा ओवर देर टेम्परेचर डेटा प्रेसिपिटेशन डेटा ह्यूमिडिटी डेटा एक्सेट्रा सो विद दैट डेटा एज अ स्टेटिस्टिशियन आई प्राइमरली इंटरेस्टेड इन टू थिंग्स ओनली वन इज हाउ टू कंपेयर दीज डिफरेंट ग्रुप्स ऑफ ऑब्जर्वेशन मतलब एक ऑब्जर्वेशन जो दिल्ली में है वो चेन्नई के या शिमला या मनाली के कंपैरिजन में कैसा है राइट एंड सेकंड जब मैंने वेरिएबल्स को मेजर किया है फॉर एग्जांपल इफ आई मेजर टेम्परेचर एंड प्रेसिपिटेशन इज द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन देम राइट सो दैट्स द टू थिंग्स और दैट्स द ऑल इन अ नटशेल व्हाट वी डू इन स्टैटिस्टिक्स राइट सो अगेन लेट्स अगेन ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड वेरिएबल्स right from practical aspect right so when i left hand side me is a map of india right abhi humne samjha tha population or sample can you please tell me what is population what is sample in the chat box quickly please tell me sample is a representative of population excellent right basically we are trying to investigate something right jo hum kuch study karna chahte hain then we kind of <clears throat> is the total mass in sample is representative of population okay great sample is smaller representation of the population exactly so for example yahan pe left hand side top mein right look into this part let me just pull out my pen this is a map of india where i have just highlighted the major cities right <clears throat> madhya pradesh mein ek city hai that is bhopal odisha mein there is a city called as bhubneshwar right and delhi we all know is the capital of our country right so agar sare cities ko le liya sare data ko that is my population aur agar maan lo i just ex, you know extracted the data for only these three cities then this becomes a sample right ab yahan pe samjho ki maine i just tried to create a table right to create i have basically done an experiment right in statistical terms we call this as experiment matlab ki मैंने दिल्ली में एक सेंसर रखा राइट एंड आई जस्ट ट्राई टू इन्वेस्टिगेट सम डेटा सेट्स राइट सो दिस इज एन एक्सपेरिमेंट एंड ईच ऑफ द रोज रिप्रेजेंट द डेटा फ्रॉम दैट एक्सपेरिमेंट 
right? So that data is now represented in the form of a table, okay? So what happens friends over here is I have city name, I have which part of the country I'm talking about. Say so this Kolkata is in the east part, Bhopal is in the central part, right? <clears throat> I have put the sensor and there are different seasons, right? There could be summer, monsoon, autumn, spring, etc. Then there are weather conditions and then there are, you know, the recorded temperature and precipitation. Jab, jab experiment ki data ko, the moment I put it in a table, right? This experimental data, these are called as variables, right? Each of these columns are representing a variables, right? And friends, variables are primarily of two types, right? One of them is called as a categorical variable and the other is called as a numerical variable, right? Is it clear to everyone? What are the type of variables? Categorical variable and numerical variable, right? <clears throat> Again, to investigate what I'm doing, first I perspective that I'm doing an experiment. To do an experiment, I have a population. From that, I've extracted a sample. A sample ko maine ek data ke table mein sajha diya, right? It could be a spreadsheet in Excel, right? Each of the columns are representing variables, right? Each of them are variables and in variables also, there are two categories primarily, right? One is called as categorical, the other is called as numerical, right? Now, what is the difference between both of them? Now to understand, this is what I've put up in the, you know, on, on the left hand side and the right hand side, divided in two equal parts. Okay? Categorical ka matlab ye raha, ki jo data mere paas rahega, right? The moment I have the data, you can just imagine categorical data is just like these two buckets, right? Blue and pink, right? So for example, jo mera table hai, is mein Kolkata and Bhopal. These are the two cities. So you can just imagine the two buckets, one of the buckets is for Delhi, one of the, uh, for sorry, not for Delhi, for Kolkata, and the other is for Bhopal, right? So that's my categorical data. Fundamentally, you can imagine categorical data as something which can be put in the form of buckets. Alag alag buckets mein aap usko put kar sakte, right? And in those categorical data, you can still create a summary. Summary as in Kolkata mein kitne observation hai, teen observation hai, Bhopal ke char observation hai, right? So total, right, that's the number. And I can also summarize it, summarize the categorical data in the form of percentage, not only numeric, but also percentage, right? So the percentage, you can say about which we have to find, observation, sorry, Shivangi, categorical, we can say about which we have to find observations, right? Sir, uh, you have to find. Of course, that's one of the ways to look into it, Shubhangi, absolutely. But in my perspective, dekho, what I'm trying to showcase over here is jo dono data types, hai, the do, both the types of variables, right, are totally different, right? Categoricals, categorical data can be demarcated into different categories, right? For example, I'm just trying to showcase Yahape do categories hai, mere paas, right? Exactly. Blood group is also a category. Excellent. We'll talk about a lot of these details, friends, when we start our journey of statistics. Today we're just trying to introduce it to understand a very basic. We'll look into these things with a lot of examples, alag -alag perspectives, hai. not just you know climate and environmental sciences. <clears throat> yeah, qualitative and quantitative. Type, absolutely. We can further kind of demarcate. But for now, 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 for for now, 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 for from for now, for now, for now, for from that population, I draw a sample. Sample and I have two cities, liye, right? Kolkata and Bhopal, right? Unke, un data ko maine alag -alag variables ke form mein distribute kiya, right? The one which which you know which which is categorical data, 
is something which cannot be represented on a num number line. You can understand in such a way. This one is number line pe nahi represent kar sakte. It's a qualitative data. Excellent. Arithra, that's the whole point. It's a qualitative data. But perspective samjho, it's like you can still summarize that data. Right? For example, yaha pe mere paas saat observation te, three of them pe for Kolkata, four for Bhopal. So I can summarize as three by seven approx 43% and four by seven approx 57% is the summary. Right? Also, I can visualize it this data, categorical data as a bar graph, right? Which on the bottom, bottom way, right? So to visualize a categorical data, either I can summarize, you know, as the number and percentage, or I can plot a bar graph, right? That's what a categorical data is. Whereas, jo dusra tha, jo mera dusra numeric data tha, right? For example, you know, uh, Bhopal ka temperature, precipitation, all that. The numeric data is something which can be put up on a number line, right? As dot plots. What you see on the top is a dot plot, right? In future, we'll understand kis plot ko ka use karna hai. But aji aapko mein fundamentally bata de rao. Anybody who is you know, doing statistics, right? Which kind of data ko, which kind of visualization lega? is a dot plot or a number line can be done with a numeric, you know, kind of a data. Similarly, I can summarize the data through different metrics, right? If I have a numeric data, I might look for range. I might look for IQR. That's the interquartile range. I can look for median. I can look for mean. Yes, are descriptive statistics. Your data will be numeric, right? That's the kind of a statistical summary I can make if I have a numeric data, I can't make an IQR for a categorical data. I cannot do a range median mode analysis for a categorical data, right? This is from an application point of view, right? I can make it for a numeric data. Similarly, similarly, the moment you can compute these range, IQRs, etc., you can do visualizations as is you go pata hai kya ye plot kya hota hai? Anybody in the chat box are we really happy to know? What is this plot? I have made a cartoon in this place. Who has heard this plot? Box plot. Excellent. It's a box and a whisker plot. Right? Or a box plot. Box and a whisker plot. This is the box and this is the median value. Right? So you can visualize a box plot for a numerical data. Similarly, rather than a, you know, a bar, bar graph, you would be interested in you know, if you have only numeric data, you can have a distribution. Or anybody, is graph ko kya bolte hai? Jo cartoon mene banaya hai yaha pe? Numeric data ke liye. What is this called? Histogram. Excellent. Uh, very good. I already have data scientists in our group. Excellent. Basically, numeric data ko aap descriptive statics ki, statistics ke madhyam se summarize kar sakte hai. Right? Or usi ke chalte aap anokhe visualization kar sakte hai, right? In pure Hindi, sorry for that. Like anokhe ka matlab aap ek box whisker plot bana sakte hai. Aap data ka distribution ek histogram ki through dekh sakte hai. But categorical data ka box whisker plot nahi bana sakte hai. You cannot make a distribution histogram for a categorical data. This is a very fundamental knowledge. Ho sakte hai aap is cheez ko kar rahe honge without knowing. Right. In my case, for example, I was doing a lot of things, but I realized this later. So that could be a eureka moment for any one of you who was already making a histogram, but didn't realize this. Right. So or was making a box and whisker plot because. OK, Shubhang, I'll just repeat the point again. I have to repeat the entire story, actually, not the entire point. So from the starting again, I, I buy some sensors, right? 100 sensors throw it across the continent, right, in, in say, <clears throat> 50 cities. That's my population, right? Then I have to come up with some analysis. Ki bhai, temperature ka kya, I am measuring temperature, precipitation, right, different new corners of the country. And then I need to come up with a study using the statistics, right? So for that, what I do, I create a variable table, right? Variable table, what I do is I have different categories. That's the 
different variables wherein I have city name, for example, which part of the city it is, etc., etc. Then I'll look at the numbers, right? <clears throat> so, excuse me, <clears throat> sorry. So I have categorical data, which is basically, for example, city name would be a categorical data, which is which part, of, for example, Kolkata say I had three observations, right? From Bhopal, I had four observations, et cetera, et cetera, right? So that's my categorical data, right? I can create a summary of numbers or percentage from this data, right? I can visualize a bar chart, right? I can make a bar chart on this categorical data, right? Apart from that, I have numerical data, right? For example, temperature, precipitation, Numeric data is what? Numeric data is something which can be represented on a number line, right? So this plot, what you see over here, is a dot plot or a number line, which we study in our childhood days, right? But when you summarize this data, right? If you have numeric data, ko summarize kar rahe, then there are statistical, descriptive statistical, you know, definitions which you need to compute, like mean, median, mode, IQR, right? So a numeric data can be described in a way more, uh, you know, complicated way, in, put it that way, rather than a categorical data. And because of that, you can do such analysis, you can see your numeric data ka pura distribution, dekh sakte ho, right? You can create a box plot, or you can create a histogram. Is this clear now, right? The entire story, what it is all about the categorical data and the numerical data, right? Always let's look at a very fundamental aspect. All right. So similarly, what I get over here is yeah, Kolkata ka, if I have to just create, we'll do into all these things, friends, right? Or may I have mathematics to but you know, you should look how I mean, median, IQR, yeah, one line program hota hai Python mein. Right to create a statistical table like this from the data. Right, so of course you should know what is interquartile range means, what is range, what is mean, what is median. But a lot of these things will be done by the statist by the software. Right, that's Python basically. Coding will do it for you. So we just computed, say from using Python for Kolkata, what is the you know summertime median temperature, summertime kya range hai etc etc and then basically this data say I can plot a box and whisker plot for Kolkata right I can create say for example using this table rather than this table that's one of the ways to show a better way to visualize this data ki main Kolkata ke liye I will draw a box and whisker plot right this is what you know descriptive statistics from a numerical data can do for you okay I hope that gives you a perspective we're just looking at the perspectives today, right? Because this is the, I'm, you know, introducing the pillar to you. What all will be there? In Jiso Kam, we'll see detail in detail. IQR, range, mean, median, examples ke through we'll see. Python ki dunya mein bhi dekhenge. But just to give you what is the big picture. So, final, this is the final slide for me in this pillar. So, how to be like Professor Mayer, right? Professor Maya gave a very stunning report, right? Based on the statistical summary, where, what did she do? She basically studied, you know, the population ka sample. And then basically she gave a test, hypothesis testing. The, the felling of trees are happening. That's impacting the ecological balance, right? So, if you have a variable, if you have, if you have different variables tomorrow, what is the way of going ahead, right? What is the test you need to do, right? So I have just listed some of these and we'll be doing each of these friends in this course, right? Because Abhi Kandina, it will be very difficult to do it you know, in a very short span of time. But I'm just giving you the whole perspective. How this course in the statistical world will make you independent to perform any of those, you know, analysis and come up with thorough studies just like Professor Meyer did. For example, you have a data hai, pe sirf categorical data, hai, right? For example, you just one categorical data. You have two cities ka data, hai, for example, right? That's a categorical data, city ka name. 
So there you can do a one sample proportion test. If you have two categorical data, then you do something called as a chi-square test. If you have one numeric data, you do something called as a t-test, right? There you have to look at the distribution, right? So tell me, friends, a small question. What will be the in the in the third column? Abhi tak jisne dhyan diya hoga, mujhe ye batao. One numeric data ko kaise represent kar sakte? What kind of a plot one can get make in a one numeric data? Anybody? One numeric data ko kaise represent kar sakte? Anybody? How can you represent a one numeric data as a graph as a visualization? We looked at the numeric data, friends. Bar graph. Oops. Bar graph was for categorical data or yeah, histogram, histogram or the box and whisker plot. Either of the two are right answers. So these will be some questions which will be asked to you in in the assignment of your you know demo class for statistics. This class ka bhi kuch assignment hoga, right? Uh, there's a Google Classroom which has been created this week. So all the assignments will be uploaded on that. Okay. So keep, you know, looking over there. Uh, you will be having your IDs. I hope Gaurav sir can give a confirmation on that. Gaurav sir, uh, if you're there. So there one can look into the, you know, assignment, right? Yes. Gaurav sir has given a yes, that one can look into that. Similarly, friends, if you have a numeric data or a categorical data, right? We will add all the assignments there, as Gaurav sir has said. So, in this case, you have a double distribution, right? So, there you use something called as ANOVA, right? Analysis of variance. And if you have two numeric data, then we do something called as a correlation analysis, right? Or it's this correlation in more detail. Friends, okay. So that's the introductory lecture for statistics. Tomorrow we meet at the same time, and I'll give you the the pillar, the vertical on coding. Why coding is important in this course? What all we'll cover in this course? Okay. Oops, I didn't have to do that. <laughs> Just give me a second. I'll reshare that. Oops. All right. So thank you. I end with the pie chart. We'll look into all these. Why, when to do, and what to do, which visualization to do. It will be a fun to do. So, anybody, any questions on this? Quite doubt. It's simply up to what kind of data variables are and uh, what kind of visualization one can do. All right. Okay, great. Let's meet again tomorrow, same time, six o'clock. Thank you.